Now, I would like to welcome Judge Hiroaki Imai from the Intellectual Property High Court to present an outline of the case that forms the subject of today's mock trials. Judge Imai, please go ahead. I will now explain the mock trial case that would be used in the mock trials and panel discussion in the court part of the symposium. First, I will summarise the case. The plaintiff is a corporation in country A called Pony. Pony holds the patent rights in both countries A and B for an invention named Roll Paper. I will call this uh, the invention during this explanation. The patent right for country A is hereinafter referred to as the patent right, and the patent right in country B as the corresponding patent right. Pony has granted a license for the corresponding patent right to a wholly owned subsidiary corporation in country B named Collie. Collie manufactures and sells roll paper using the invention in country B. The defendant is a corporation in country A named Donkey, which imports roll paper manufactured by a corporation in country B called Turtle and sells it in country A. This roll paper I will call the defendant's product in this explanation. Pony alleges that the importation and sale of the defendant's product infringes Pony's patent rights and seeks an injunction against the importation and sale of the defendant's product. The technical premise of this case is as follows. This invention role relates to roll paper that is used in an article packaging device. Let me explain this device. The packaging process of an article packaging device is as follows. The packaging process of this article packaging device involves drawing out a heat sealable packaging seat and folding it in two. Subsequently, the articles are placed on the sheet, wrapped and sealed by heat fusing to create smaller individual packages. This device is typically used for packaging powdered medicines and other pharmaceuticals. This slide shows only one or two of these smaller packages for the sake of clarity, but typically after packaging multiple sheets are connected in a long chain. The part of the device that relates to roll paper is as follows. Roll paper is a packaging sheet wound around a core tube and inserted onto a roll holder for use. When the roll paper is attached to the roll holder, the roll paper and roll holder rotate integrally as the packaging sheet is drawn out by the supply roller. Here, breaking force is applied to the rotation of the roll holder so that the packaging sheet is drawn out with an appropriate tension without sagging. The rotation of the roll paper is governed by the torque produced by the tension of the packaging sheet being drawn out by the supply roller and the torque produced by the breaking force of the brake. Torque is determined by the size of the force and the distance from the rotation axis to the position where the force is applied. When the torque caused by the tension acting on the packaging sheet is greater than the torque caused by the braking force, the roll paper begins to rotate and will continue to rotate as long as both torques stay the same. Since the outer diameter of the roll paper decreases as the packaging sheet is drawn out, if the tension acting on the packaging sheet remains constant, 
the torque working to rotate the roll paper will gradually decrease. However, if the braking force remains constant, the distance from the rotation axis to the brake will not change. Consequently, the torque caused by the braking force remains constant, which may cause the roll paper to stop. Therefore, it is necessary to gradually increase the tension to maintain the magnitude of the torque caused by tension to rotate the roll paper. However, if the tension becomes too large, it may lead to issues such as cutting of the sheet. Thus, when the braking force is constant as the packaging sheet is drawn out, the braking force becomes relatively excessive. Therefore, it is essential to adjust the braking force to keep the tension within an appropriate range. To adjust the braking force, a method of installing a sensor that directly detects the outer diameter or diameter of the roll paper and adjusting the braking force according to the detective single of the sensor is possible. However, in this method, it is difficult to detect the appropriate diameter due to the distortion that inevitably occurs in roll paper that is simply wrapped with a packaging sheet. As an alternative, an indirect method of calculating the diameter from the length of the drawn out packaging sheet is also possible. This method uses a sensor for detecting the rotation angle of the roll holder and another sensor for measuring the length of the drawn out packaging sheet. However, if the rotation deviation occurs between the core tube and the roll holder, the rotation angle of the roll paper cannot be accurately detective and consequently, the exact diameter of the roll paper also cannot be known. To address these issues and accurately detect the rotation angle of the roll paper, the purpose of the invention is to directly, directly detect the rotation angle of the roll paper itself and appropriately adjust the braking force applied to the roll paper to which the roll paper is attached in accordance with the outer diameter of the roll paper. Now, let us examine the claims of the invention. I will skip reading out the exact scopes of the claims. This is the uh, second slide that describes the scope of the claims. This illustration illustrates the scope of the claims. The key point of the invention is that the magnets installed are installed on the core tube not on the roll holder which is a part of the packaging device. The core tube could only be detached after the consumable roll paper is wound around in it. This installation allows for the direct detection of the rotation angle of the roll paper. Next we will explain the point of issue in this case which is exhaustion. Exhaustion means that the patentee is not allowed to exercise patent rights over a patented product if it is lawfully distributed by the patentee or the licensee, even if an act equivalent to working the patented invention such as use or resale occurs. For example, the patentee cannot exercise a patent right against a patented product that is resold or reused after the product was initially sold by the patentee. There are various types of exhaustion. International exhaustion refers to when a patented product moves across national borders. For example, it represents the concept in which, for example, a patented product that is manufactured and sold in country B under a license from the patentee for the patent in country B is then imported back into country A. In this case, the patentee who holds the patent right in country B for the same invention cannot enforce its patent rights on that patented product. 
This case specifically pertains to the validity of international exhaustion. Let's proceed with a summary of the facts of this case. In this case, in country B, Collie, a wholly owned subsidiary of Pony, manufactures roll paper using the invention. Under license from Pony, which holds the corresponding patent right. Pony also holds the patent right for the invention in country A and is seeking to enforce its rights based on that patent right. Please note, there is no dispute between the parties that the defendant's product falls into the technical scope of the patent. However, in this case, roll paper manufactured and sold by Collie in country B is not being imported to and sold in country A. In this case, the defender's product is made from core tubes of roll paper that were manufactured and sold by Collie. These were purchased and collected by Turtle, who then wound the packaging sheet around the used core tube. In other words, the core tube portion was manufactured and sold by Collie, but the packaging sheet was newly prepared by Turtle, so the core tube manufactured and sold by Collie could be considered to have been processed. The first point of issue in this case is whether international exhaustion is authorised or not. Next, the second point of issue is, even if international exhaustion is authorised, what should be considered in the case of modification or replacement of components? The defendant donkey argues that international exhaustion should be authorised and that rewinding the packaging sheet on the used core tube of the plaintiff's roll paper is only an act of replacing a consumable component under normal use and does not in any way prevent international exhaustion. In contrast, the plaintiff pony denies international exhaustion and argues that even if international exhaustion is allowed, once the roll paper is used up, the roll paper has completed its role and lost its utility. Thus, if it can be used again, it will create a product that has lost the identity of the previous product. The details of both sides' arguments and the court's decisions on these issues will be presented in the mock trials that will begin soon. This concludes the summary of the case that will be used in the mock trials and panel discussion. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Judge Imai.